Well, I want to uh, <clears throat> want to just uh, continue my theme that actually nothing is nothing is pointless, nothing is wasted. We can do nothing against the truth, only for the truth. And also this theme of when I'm weak, then am I strong. Uh, that is, I think, the theme of every human life, and it's certainly been the theme of my life. So, it was in 1989-90 that I put adverts out in uh, Pravda, which was the big uh, newspaper in the, in the former Soviet Union. Uh, that's another story. Um, and, well, got all these thousands of replies, and I was going around <clears throat> trying to... Uh, Follow these people up, etc. And there was a guy, this was all snail mail, there was no email, no cell phones in those days. There was a guy in, uh, well, in Siberia, really. And that was about four days' journey from where I was in Vilnius, in Lithuania. And a young guy, and he seemed real good. And um, I thought I would go over there and, and see him. So I, uh, I couldn't afford a fly in those days. I mean, I had to get the night train from Vilnius to Moscow. I had to kick around in the railway stations in Moscow until the evening. You arrived in the morning from Vilnius, and you had to kick around and get the trains out to Siberia in the evening. And then it was three days journey, just trundling along in uh, in a wagon, and uh, yeah, not a chance to read your Bible in the, in those days and. Uh, Three days Bible reading. Anyway, I got there, and uh, you couldn't communicate ahead of time. This person had no phone. All you could do was to send telegrams to say, I'm coming on such and such a day. Uh, letters, snail mail, took about two to three weeks between Vilnius and uh, Siberia. And uh, so you were never completely sure whether it was going to work or not. So anyway, I tripped off. <clears throat> And, of course, time for prayer and everything. And I got there, I suppose, thinking I was quite spiritually sort of fired up. Three days or more reading the Bible and, and, and praying and so forth on the train. I mean, well, what else you do uh, on those long, long Russian train journeys? Well, I got there and I got a taxi. This guy was some way out of, uh, out of the city. And, uh, well, it was evening. Uh, no deal. No, I don't want to be baptized. Uh, very sorry, they were sort of farming people. Here's a chicken. And this chicken, there was a very, very big chicken uh, that they plucked and uh, so forth. And I told the taxi driver, just just wait a minute, um, you know, just take me to this place and just, just wait, you know, in case there's a wrong address or something. And he was waiting, and I, uh, the encounter only lasted a few minutes. And I went out to the guy, I said, yeah, take me back into the city centre. And there I was with this chicken in a, in a white bag. So I got back into the city centre. Of course, I was feeling pretty uh, uh, pretty angry. I mean, I, I'd spent four days getting there, trundle, trundle, trundle on the train. And, you know, it's going to be a uh, good, whatever, eight days, ten days or whatever out of my life. And I, I was very angry with God. You should never be angry with God. God loves us. God really loves us. Don't be mad with God. He gave his son to die for us. And just because we cannot make sense of his, his hand in our life, don't get cranky with God. He, he loves us. Don't, don't, don't get cranky. But anyway, I was. So I got to the hotel. A hotel. Very cheap it was. And, um, well, I put this, uh, this chicken on the, in its plastic bag on the, on the table. There was no refrigerator or anything. No, it was late at night. And, uh, my mother always taught me to kneel down and pray, say my prayers on my knees, and uh, that night I didn't. I'll tell you, that night I didn't. I just got in the bed and said, well, God, you know, what are you doing playing around with me like this? You waste my time. And, uh, well, in the morning I got up, <clears throat> and uh, for some reason I took this chicken with me. And uh, before I knew where, what was happening, uh, in those days, there was still the idea of sort of citizens who were, well, spying basically for the KGB and so forth. And I obviously got reported. The cops came around. Um, we understand you're walking around with a severed head in a white plastic bag. I said, oh, really? 
Um, and I shower, so now it's a chicken. It's not very pleasant, in uh, particularly in those days, having the Russian uh, authorities on your case, especially for having a severed head in a white plastic bag. And it's, it's not a white, it's not a, it's not a severed head. <clears throat> and they looked at it, and they said, "Well, it's a turkey." I said, "It's not a turkey. It's a really fat, it's a really fat, fattened chicken." And I said, well, "Do you want it?" Well, I mean, it was going off by this time. And um, one of the guys took it. He went off. I was thinking, yeah, you turkey, all right. Well, I was not in a good mood. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I must do something anyway to make a witness in this city. But what to do? Well, I got a piece of paper, white paper, A4 sort of size, and I, I wrote a very simple little message. If you would like to study the Bible with me, here is my address in Vilnius, which I remember now was a ya, or P.O. Box, you'd say, P.O. Box 1903, Vilnius 2012, Lithuania. That was my postal address in those years. A very simple little thing. I just wrote it uh, in, in Russian, uh, poorly written, handwritten, um, probably looking like a child had, had written it. In those days, access to photocopying was, was really quite limited, and all you could do was to go to the post office and get photocopies in the post office. So I was in this long line with all these old grannies waiting to get their, I don't know, documents photocopied for something or other. And it came to my turn, and the woman said, well, there's a maximum of, um, there's a maximum of 20 sheets. Well, I, I had about, I don't know, four, I think, four of my little messages on each on each of the on the the a4 piece of paper so 20 20 coppers came to all up i would have had 80 of my little these little leaflets so i photocopied them and there in the, this big huge post office with all these grannies filling up forms about whatever i i tore it up just by hand I, you know just folded it and ripped it I, I didn't even have a ruler to make a nice job of it I'm not very good at things like that so i had my 80 pieces of paper and I stood outside the post office and went up to people and said, can I, can I give you a leaflet? And they, this rugged piece of paper. Well, I trundled back to Vilnius. And I, I was angry with God and I, I was frustrated. Of course. I didn't have the wisdom to see that actually you can do nothing against the truth. That everything actually is used by God. That nothing goes wrong, ultimately. But it certainly seemed like there were maybe all my sins, God, God's mad with me, or God's not going to work with me anymore, he's against me, and all that sort of thing. That's how you feel. Well, I got back to Vilnius, and my life went on, and then one day I got a, 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 a reply. Some guy said, please send me uh, your, your book. And I sent him Bible Basics to this town, and we started corresponding. Again, you know, two or three weeks each, each way, he sent me his answers back, and I thought, oh, wow, this is good. But I thought, I, I want to go over there again, baptize someone after what happened last time. Anyway, this guy said, no, 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 this, this is all good, this is all good, uh, I definitely want to do this. And I told him, you know, how it happened, that I had uh, been there and given him given out these little bits of paper, scrub, scrappy little bits of photocopied, whatever it is, A4, a quarter of an A4, page written in handwriting if you want to study the bible right to this address in lithuania well i did go over there again <clears throat> and i again i was not in the best of moods so i thought you know god are you you're playing around with me have you got some sort of a trap or something in in this uh, this distant city in siberia you know it's overnight train to vilnius kick around all day in moscow and then three days well, I got there, I met him, he's a wonderful guy, young guy, very smart, sharp guy, working in a bank. Yeah, baptized him, went to his place, met his mom, he lived with his mother. Very good guy, early 20s, I thought, wow, this, is a, this was wonderful. So I say goodbye to him, I went back to Vilnius, very, very buoyed up, yes, praise the Lord. Well, I hadn't been back long when uh, the phone rang. And in those days, you could always tell whether it was a local call or a long distance call in the Soviet Union because of um, it, it rang in a different way. And I thought, oh, this is a uh, this th this is a long distance call. And I picked it up, and it was Demetra's mother. 
And she said, oh, man, my son was such a wonderful young man. Um, but, you know, he worked in the bank. You know, he actually was there on the front desk, as it were, to, like the cashier. He said, well, there were bandits. They came in, they shot him right in the face, and they killed him in a bank robbery. Well, you'll meet Dimitri in the kingdom of God. And I, well, what was I to think? <clears throat> that finally I got it. And I'm glad that happened uh, fairly, you know, it was 93. This is, might have been 94, but I think 93. A long, you know, 93 it would have been, if, I don't know, it could have been 92. Could have been 91, I, I don't know. Some, somewhere around there. So you're going back, well, 30 years, um, and I'm glad that that happened then, because I had a lot of other very strange, very strange journeys. And sometimes it doesn't work out. You know, I spent my life going around, chasing up contacts, meeting folks who've been corresponding, baptizing them. And I think that happened 30 years ago to just sort of encourage me, to set me on the path. Now, of course, I could have pulled out the process and just said, oh, you know, God's sort of just mucking around with me. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Of course, I was on my own, as, as usual, and um, probably if I'd had someone else with me, we would have talked it all over and said, no, 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 in future you mustn't do this. This is a waste of money, waste of time. But I think that I was on my own because, well, I didn't have that person to talk to, except the Lord to talk to, or rail at, almost. And so <laughs> I was taught, wasn't I, that somehow although you cannot attach meaning to event at the time god is definitely with you and when things appear to go wrong there is this silver lining now in that case it took me what some months to to see that silver lining but a lot of times you may never see it in this life but what it comforted me was that that in the end there is a silver lining that in the end nothing is random and there's no such thing as wasted time if you are serving the Lord, and I'm sure plenty of wasted time in secular life, but if you're with the Lord, nothing is wasted. We can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. And that was my father's favorite verse. And as I've got older, I see that, that you can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. And if you go that way with all your heart, although you get frustrated, and although you're not nice to God at times because of our humanity and our weakness, in the end, in the very final end, we will see that it all made perfect sense and that God is not defeated. God is not defeated. And if we're on his side, really, it can only work out for the truth.